Uh, once again, we're not participating ritually here in the church physically, but I think we're participating in Holy Week uh, in reality, not in, in ritual in the church, but in, in reality in our lives as we together uh, deal with this, uh, this situation and make the best of it as uh, uh, whatever crosses we find in our lives to bring, allow them to bring new life out of us. Of course, that brings us to our uh, today, the, the celebration today of uh, we call Passion Sunday and Palm Sunday. Passion, Palm Sunday. There's the two realities of, of the Palm, Palm Sunday, the Passion. We, of course, we have the Palms at the beginning of the, the Mass, the, cele- the procession with the Palms, and then we have the reading of the Passion. So these two realities that I'll like to touch on. First, of course, is, is the Palms. You know, we don't see too many Palms up here in the, in the Northeast. Um, but it's interesting when you learn about palms, how they were the most important, you know, palm trees and palm plants are the most important uh, commodity in, in nations in, in the uh, uh, desert areas of the world. They're a food source. Uh, there's the palm oil used for cooking oil. It's rich in vitamins. You get dates, nuts, fruits, curries, sweets, and desserts, jellies, jams, coconut milk, sugar, vinegar, and bread out of the palms. Uh, beverages, um, there's fermented beverages, palm wine, distilled gin, construction material uh, for roofing, you know, fencing, logs for bridges, pillars, uh, palm kernels, shells for concrete mix, road construction, household things like brooms and baskets, cosmetics, palm oil uh, for body lotion, uh, bleach palm oil for soap, uh, charcoal as well. Pharmaceuticals, cough syrup, uh, palm oil is a base for mixing medicines. Uh, it's good for stomach ulcers, stomach disorders. You also get uh, liniment, They're good for sore throats, colds, bronchial uh, afflictions, fevers. Toothaches have been relieved by the date palm root. Uh, fuel as well. Uh, palm kernels are used for blacksmith fuel. It has a high heat capacity. Um, also used for lanterns, for light. Um, palms are uh, water resistant and seawater um, sea resistant. So they're good. They resist rotting. They're great for making boats, uh, for uh, roofs of houses and anchors for, for boats. They use the palm wood is used for furniture, mats, doormats, brushes, mattresses, bowls, wicker. Uh, jewelry, beads, necklaces, bracelets, the heads of canes and bowls. Uh, the be- it's epoxy is made out of them. The best resin in the world comes from the palms. Uh, trapeze artists use the resin to get a better grip when they're doing their uh, trapeze routines. Uh, it's also used, the palms are used for dyes, varnishes, incense. And they're, so important was the palm that if a country really wanted to devastate an opponent, they would cut down all their palm trees, you know, that you cannot rebuild life after that. So when you hold up the palms, you really are holding up your best, holding up something that was essential to your life, and basically saying, you know, as the palm is important to our lives, Jesus, you are even more important. You know, we lay those down to you and realize that you are the center, you are the most important, uh, what we need for our life to follow you. So the significance, the meaning of the palms, for us it simply has been something that we wave in the hand, air, but that it's, it means the heart of our, of our life, our existence, that we lay before you. So the meaning of Palm Sunday, and then uh, we say uh, Passion Sunday uh, as well, uh, the Passion Sunday. And sometimes we, uh, it's good to understand the word, the meaning of the word passion, which actually comes from the word passio, which means passive, which is you know, what is done unto a person. That's what the word, uh, actually it's the word, what the word patient comes from, passio. The, you know, when you're a patient in a hospital, all you can do is trust and surrender to what is being done unto you from the, you know, the doctors and so forth, and the surgeons. And of course, it, it's contrasted to the word action, axio, which comes, you know, what we can do. And of course, we see the gospels divided up into these, you know, two sections of Jesus' life. And the Gospels make a clear demarcation of these two parts, these journeys. 
You know, and Jesus set his face to Jerusalem. Uh, and these are the two categories and two halves of our lives as well. If we're honest with ourselves, most of life is this second category. That there are those things we cannot control, we cannot fix, we cannot manipulate, we cannot direct, we cannot manage, or even understand. Uh, and this pandemic we're going through is helping us to experience more, uh, you know, this part of life. You know, it's the basis of the serenity prayer. You know, God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. And as we see in the life of Jesus, he began his act of ministry. You know, I've come to bring glad tidings, good news to the poor, to proclaim liberty to captives, release of freedom for the prisoners, recovery of sight to the blind, to proclaim a year of favor from the Lord. So, you know, Jesus, the active part of his life, which we are all called also to have that same passion and commitment and love for. And of course, we, there's a lot of stories in literature about the active hero. You know, the hero's quest of doing something great and noble and gallant. You know, a hero makes a journey, you know, climbs a mountain, gets a prize, goes to the cave, slays the, slays the dragon. We see in the scriptures, you know, Moses confronting Pharaoh, David battling Goliath. But even in those cases, there is the need to accept what one is not in control over. One does not have one's own personal power to do this. Moses realizes it's, you know, he's told to be still and allow God to do the fighting. Let God work through you. David, the same way, recognized it is not I, it's but the Lord who accomplishes his victory through him. But of course, in, in our culture, it's often, you know, being in control of one's destiny, one's job or finances seems to be an unquestionable value. You know, the popular phrase, take control of your life. You know, it's the fundamental message often of self-help books, ascent, achievement, accumulation, accomplishment, uh, as it presented as the only way, the only way of being in the, in the world. And then as a result, the cross often means for us simply a piece of jewelry, uh, something that, rather than something that challenges that whole dimension of life, of that there are things that we are called to accept, to love, to forgive, to bear, to surrender to, and entrust ourselves to this pattern of life, which takes the form of the cross. It is about death and resurrection, loss and renewal, surrendering and transformation, losing one's life in order to find one's life. You know, the, what we cannot change and affect is called for us to be changed and transformed and to grow through that process. You know, and so often we simply react out of that the shallow part of our life towards the shallow part of another person rather than allow the, what's deepest in us to respond to what's deepest in another. We're often the only creatures that rebel against, you know, this part of the journey, the way of the cross, rather than how we are called to participate and trust in that process, that journey of letting go, of detachment. We simply want to hold on to ourselves as we are rather than embracing, letting go, surrendering, and entrusting, and losing ourselves in order to truly find ourselves. And that is the message of the passion. This change, this transformation and renewal is what we celebrate, of course, at each Mass. The grains of wheat become bread, becoming the body of Christ. Grape becomes the wine, which becomes the blood. Everything changes, everything transforms. And what often accomplishes that is suffering, is loss, is letting go. Suffering means, the definition really is about, you know, not being in control. You know, we often don't recognize that that is the path to new life. Letting go of our small ego, our small self. Embracing the greater life, the greater reality of God's kingdom, the reality of God's life himself. Instead, we often try to deal through avoidance, willpower, denial, medication, or even therapy, or escape and illusion to what seems a loss, a humiliation, an undesired vulnerability, rather than loving and embracing and being patient with and forgiving life and reality and people and their fragility, imperfection and brokenness that leads to our discovering and becoming our truest and deepest selves. So Jesus, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. Henry Nouwen, the renowned spiritual writer, tells a story of a, of a, a man he visited in, in a hospital. Someone who was used to being in charge. He was a, 
a CEO of a company, of a large company, and a very, once a very active man. And now he was lying on a hospital bed, dying, unable to take care of his own, own basic needs even. And he said to Father Nowen, Father, you have to help me. I'm dying and I'm trying to make peace with that. But there is something else too. You know me. I have always been in charge. I took care of my family. I took care of my company. I took care of the church. I took care of things. Now I am lying here on this bed and I can't even take care of myself. Dying is one thing, but this is another. I'm helpless. I can't do anything anymore. And that feeling of being powerless, of being reduced to being a patient, one who is ministered to by others. And Father Nowen basically felt that same helplessness in how to deal and help him. And it's in that feeling that we identify with Jesus, or rather he identifies with us and the passion. And that experience of Jesus on the cross, who hangs in anguish, dying alone, humiliated, misunderstood, he hangs there in trust and fidelity, giving his life away without resentment, without recrimination, without bitterness. He shows us how to be passive in an active way, in a sense. By clinging not to himself, but to someone else with the trust and surrender that turns hatred into love, curses into blessing, bitterness into graciousness, recrimination into understanding, and God's silence into faith. On the cross, we see him, we see more than one person in a sense. We see the Father, the trust, the power that the Father gives to him by his trust and surrender. He's being, he's being held and empowered by that relationship. A trust and surrender to the Father's love. So he, he calls out in his helplessness, my God, why have you abandoned me? That feeling of being alone. But then, Father, into your hands I entrust my spirit. And so we also witness God the Father also suffering with his son. God suffering with us. Holding his son in the darkness. Showing himself worthy of trust. A God suffering with his son and with us. And God's response, resurrection. Came not as an act of vengeance, but as an act of unfathomable redemption, understanding, forgiveness, and love. An act that more than anything else defines the essence of who God is. And who God is to be for us. The Father is there too on the cross, suffering, waiting in patience, empowering another to trust his Son and us. We can obey commandments, we can believe doctrines, we can attend church services. And then we can run from this journey of death and resurrection, of loss and renewal. That is, this is the way, the truth, the life, the one journey that Jesus invites us all to follow with him. It is what calls upon us to loosen our grip on our small explanations, our self-serving illusions, Winter is trusted to turn to spring. Resurrection is also to be trusted, death trusted to lead to resurrection. When tr it's trusted to lead us to new life. The pattern of transformation is not death avoided, but death transformed. Without this journey to our essence of who we are in God, our self-image is all that we have. In this, the worst thing can become the best thing. Good Friday become, can become Easter Sunday. Say so you, you learn the essence of your mystery of who you truly are at the expense often of our innocence, of being hurt, of suffering. This way of loss is no longer a scary unknown, an unfortunate mistake, something we must change, but maybe an entranceway to new and deeper life. Finding who we are in God, as St. Paul discovered, it is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. It is a Copernican revolution where it is no longer I at the center, but God. Let your will be done, not mine. It is no longer me reacting out of my shallow self, but the deeper part of me responding to the deeper part of another. What the story of the gospel began with in Mary's prayer of acceptance, let it be done to me as you will, concluded with Jesus' prayer, Father, into your hands, let it be, your, let it be your, your will, not mine. There's many parts, different parts in today's gospel. Parts of Peter, the soldiers, and we are all part of, we're all those people at one time or another. But hopefully helping us to be part of Jesus and his deep bond with the Father and with all people. And that's the life to which we are invited to participate during this holy week. As we celebrate today together the, the Palm, so Palm Sunday, the Passion of Christ. And enter more fully into the journey of life and death. The journey of death and resurrection.
that leads us to the celebration of Easter, new life, and resurrection together uh, as we prepare during this wonderful and beautiful experience of Holy Week. <laughs>